All right, so Mel Gibson has had a bit of a rough go of it, despite being an incredibly prolific actor and a world-class film director. The guy has had his own share of personal issues. He had his uh, now notorious, famous uh, DUI stop where he went on an anti-Semitic rant at the cops and said a bunch of horrible, like, borderline unforgivable things and had a lot of, like, rehabilitating, rehabilitating to do when it came to his public, public image. He's largely gotten past that, although Hollywood has still kind of held a bit of a grudge against the guy. Um, in 2016, he returned to the director's chair for Hacksaw Ridge, a, a movie that really I adore. Um, it's a war film. It's not just a war film, but it's kind of like a lot of things. It's a love story. It's a courtroom drama. It's like a brothers in arms, you know, military film. And then it's this huge, massive, epic war movie. It's all of these things at the same time. And juggling all four of those pieces isn't really like an easy thing to do necessarily. Um, but Hacksaw Ridge gets so much of it right. And when it comes to war movies, it's hard, you know, because Saving Private Ryan is like the gold standard when it comes to war movies. And so if you're going to make a film of this caliber, it really needs to do something to set itself apart. And so we're going to talk about Hacksaw Ridge right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for checking out the video. Before we get started, click on the red subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you know every time I post a new piece of content. Okay, let's talk about Hacksaw Ridge and why I adore this movie so much. Uh, first, it's based on a true story about Desmond Doss, who was a combat medic in the Pacific Theater, specifically the Battle of Okinawa, Japan, uh, during World War II. And... Um, this is kind of an era that doesn't really get as much play when it comes to World War II films. Um, obviously, the Pacific was a huge part of our campaign when it came to fighting the Japanese and the Germans. And people kind of forget that, yeah, while all the attention was being paid to, you know, us and the, the Russians liberating, you know, all of Europe from Nazi, from Nazi rule... Um, we were drawn into World War II by the attack on Pearl Harbor, and the Pacific Campaign like played a massive part in World War II, and, and it's just one of those things that kind of gets the short shrift overall. There have been miniseries and certainly films made on it, um, but it just doesn't get the same sort of play that the European campaign got, despite being extremely important. So when a, a movie about this specific part of history comes along, like I'm going to pay attention because I love this kind of stuff, and... Um, and yeah, it tells a, a, a true story about a guy who was a Seventh-day Adventist and he couldn't work on the Sabbath for him, which was, I think, Saturday. And he refused to carry a gun. And he had not just religious reasons, but throughout the film, we find out very personal reasons um, for not wanting to carry a rifle into combat. And he gets a lot of pushback from the military, from his fellow soldiers, from his commanders, from his captains, like, and he gets all this pushback and yet somehow managed to, like, stand by his convictions and finally find his way into um, the Battle of Okinawa. And the movie handles all of this, like, perfectly. Um, my one criticism of the film is that it's a little bit sappy. It's very, very, it can be a little bit melodramatic. Um, but I think that's kind of the point. And, um, and the movie is just spectacular. The action is extremely visceral. It takes about a full hour for you to actually start seeing the bullets fly. But when they do, this movie is brutal. This movie is way more brutal than I thought it would be. There's a specific moment. And if you see the movie, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, where all of this like haunting kind of imagery on the island all leads up to like this just insane amount of explosive violence. Um, and, and it works, right? Because this is a war movie and it's supposed to get and hit home uh, how really effed up this entire thing is. And so you have Desmond, who's like this relatively soft-spoken, quiet kid from Alabama, and he um, he's thrown into like this horrific situation. And the movie really does a great job of portraying how vivid and horrifying that, that, um, that the war was. And it's super important in getting the movie's message across, which is that what Desmond, and Desmond managed to do without carrying a rifle, um, and I don't want to spoil too much, but the guy was a hero. The guy won a Medal of Honor without ever actually firing a weapon, and that's fairly, like, that's, that's pretty amazing. That's not something that ever happens in war. People get Medals of Honor for, 
you know, variety of reasons, but not ever having to even like carry a gun. Um, that's such a rare, I, it's probably the only ever time this has ever happened, but, um, the other thing I really like about this movie, in addition to the fact that it's just really well presented, it's, it's beautiful, the action works, the directing is, is world class. And the special thing about this movie is the performances. Andrew Garfield really does like this soft-spoken uh, Southern kid role and embraces it with everything he has and, and just completely crushes it. Um, like I said, it's a little sappy in parts. Um, some of that is his performance, but that's what the movie is, and it, it doesn't, and it shouldn't have to make apologies for that. That's the type of movie you that that it wants to be, and that's okay. Uh, Vince Vaughn has a, an extremely important role. He's um, he's the guy who like trains all the soldiers, and he gives a lot of pushback to Desmond, and is like, dude, why are you, why are you here? Like, you don't want to, you can't even like lift up, a, you can't even shoot a gun. Like, why are you going to war? And um, and he's really good and kind of like low key perfect in this part um the other big one and and really nobody talks about this role in particular but hugo weaving plays thomas doss who is desmond's father and this is really a world-class performance this is like man this this is this is probably one of my top 10 favorite performances from any actor in a movie and weaving is well known for obviously his work in fantasy with lord of the rings and his biggest role is probably Agent Smith in The Matrix, I mean, undoubtedly. And yet he plays this man who is completely haunted by his own experience with the war and turns to substance and violence and domestic abuse and all these like horrific things. Um, and he's he's a pretty bad dude. And he's a critical character in Desmond's life, and 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 Weaving just crushes it. He he's he this movie is almost worth watching just for those two performances from Garfield and Weaving. And so if you haven't seen Hacksaw Ridge, I have nothing but good things to say about it. I would highly recommend you see it. This movie is not for the faint of heart. It is extremely violent when the when it really gets going. Um, it's, it's just, you know, mountains and buckets of gore and blood. So if you can stomach that, um, check it out. Hacksaw Ridge, this movie is great. 10 out of 10, recommend. I don't really like give scores, but if I did, this would be a 10 out of 10. So Hacksaw Ridge, check it out. I know it's a bit of an older movie. There's not really a whole lot to talk about in terms of cinema right now. So uh, check it out, Hacksaw Ridge. Thanks so much for checking out the video. If you liked it, if you found it helpful, please consider subscribing. You can click that red subscribe button. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments too. Hit me up. Let me know what you think of Hacksaw Ridge. Is this movie all that and a can of beans or is it hot garbage? Let me know, and I'll see you next Wednesday at 9 a.m.